fireworks are dangerous, and so are matches. So how can we get ourselves away from the fireworks while we're lighting them? That's what today's tutorial is going to help us do. If you caught my video last week, I had a little trouble getting a smoke bomb to go off with my Arduino board. And uh, I couldn't figure out why at first. I finally got it going by hooking directly into the 5 volt on the Arduino board. So the question was for me, how come I can ignite it with that, but not off one of the uh, digital ends or digital pins uh, that also puts out 5 volts? And the answer may be obvious to some people who are a little more familiar with electronics. And the reason is that it's not the voltage that matters, it's the amps. And the amp out on the digital pins is lower than the amp out on the 5 volt. So how do we get around this problem? The answer is simple. A transistor. A transistor has three pins on it. And basically what it does is it allows you to control a higher flow of electricity with a lower flow. And the way this works is the transistor has three pins on it. One for the positive of the higher voltage or amps and a ground but in between the two is a third pin for a lower voltage and the way I get this to work in this project is I connect the positive end to the 5 volt pin on my Arduino the ground to the ground and then I connect the middle pin to one of the digital pins and what happens is the higher voltage or the higher amps the higher flow of electricity does not flow through until it gets that signal from the digital pin. So the electricity is being supplied from the 5 volt, but it's being controlled by the digital pin. To make this project a little more easy to put together and to uh, work towards my goal of making a smaller igniter, I'm going to be using the Borduino from Adafruit Industries. Go to adafruit.com to order one. Uh, it's about $17 and it's basically an Arduino, but in a smaller size. Okay, unlike some of my uh, videos, I'm going to put this together and it's not going to be sped up because this isn't a kit, this is uh, my own little design here. And uh, we're going to go over the hardware and I'll show it to you and then in the next video we'll go over the, the software part of it, the program part of it. First thing we need is a breadboard and our Borduino. I'm going to set that into the breadboard right there. Now, uh, things we're going to need, five LEDs, any colors you want, I'm using red. Uh, a transistor, a 2N transistor. I'll have a, uh, in the description exactly which one this is because there are different types with 2N. Uh, and we're going to have three jumpers in this case here. And uh, then these are what I'm using to ignite. They're called Predators. They're E fuses. It's just what my local fireworks store had. I got um, 30 of them for $6. And uh, the way they work, they, they're wrapped up like this. and. And basically these things, these are the reload packages. You can actually buy the detonator for this, which is basically what we're making. Uh, the, the, the device that ignites these normally is $15, which is roughly what this costs us. Uh, benefits to having that is that it does have a wireless remote. Benefits of this is it's open source. You make it yourself. You can modify it to do lots of different things. You could make it wireless, but that would up the price some more. But uh, we're going on a timer based in this scenario. Uh, so you can see it has a very long cord just wrapped around here. And then when we get to the end of it, we'll pull it out and we've got five little detonator clips here. And they clip kind of like clothes pins that you clip around the um, fuse. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work this apart. It snaps off and then I can just pull one of the fuses off the others. So just go all the way down and there we go. Throw the rest of them aside. Now I've got one with a long string. I'm going to cut that back for this project, but depending on how much string you need, I guess that's about three feet of wire there. So let's start putting this board together on the breadboard. What I'm going to do, oh, let me center my board. Do we know it's a little off center there? Okay, I'm going to start putting in my LEDs, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use pins 13, 12, 11, 10, and 9. So I'm just going to use the positive end into the uh, pin 13 there, and then the other part into ground there. And I'm going to do that for 12, 11, 10, and 9. Remembering the long pin on the LED is 
your uh, positive and the short pin is your ground. And what these lights are going to do, they're going to be our countdown. The code I wrote for this is basically, whoops, uh, when you start up the code, when you supply power to the board, what it does is it's going to light up all the LEDs, then the first one's going to flash and then turn off, and the second one's going to flash three times, turn off, flash three times, turn off, flash three times, turn off, flash three times, turn off. Then they're all going to flash three times, and then it's going to ignite the fuse on the uh, smoke bomb in this case. Uh, so right now we got these hooked up to the to the different uh, uh, digital pins here. So this is 9 through 13, actually 13 through 9 going from left to right in this case of the digital pins. And then I'm just going to take ground here and hook it to the ground here because on the breadboard this blue bar on the end here for the ground, so now I'm powering ground there so you have to use that little jumper there. Uh, now I'm going to take my transistor here and I'm going to put it off to the side over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a white cable, but you can use any color you want. This is going to be my data cable and I'm going to use pin 2 in this case and hook it to the middle pin on the transistor here. Uh, and the reason I'm using pin 2 and it doesn't really matter too much what digital pin you use other than don't use digital pin 13 because every time you reset the board digital pin 13 flashes when you reset so it will ignite the uh, fuse the second you turn on your board instead of waiting for the delay uh, next I'm going to go uh, from 5 volt on the Arduino board to not to the third pin but I'm just going to put it over here into an empty pin. You'll see why in a second. Then I'm going to go from the ground on the Arduino to the third pin there. Now I'm going to go back to my E-fuse here and I'm just going to snip off, make it a little bit shorter just for this project, but in some cases you may want the longer cord. And I'm going to pull the two cords apart so, just a little bit, and strip a little bit of the insulation off the end here. There we go. And it doesn't matter which end goes in which, but I'm going to put one into the positive here. And the wire on this is pretty thin, so sometimes it's a little hard to get in there. Uh, in my final product, I'm probably going to make connectors for this. But we're going to put one end into the positive and one into the uh, first or third pin, depending on which way you're going, on the transistor. And that will be our setup. At that point, once we power the board, we'll start, as I said, flash, all the LEDs will come on, and the first one will blink three times, turn off, second one will blink three times, turn off, all the way down, then they'll all blink three times, and then phew, light our smoke bomb. So uh, let's go give it a try.